Car Talk is a Peabody Award a Euro-winning radio talk show broadcast weekly on NPR stations and elsewhere. Its subjects were automobiles and automotive repair, discussed often in a humorous way. It was hosted by brothers Tom and Ray Magliozzi, known also as Click and Clack, the Tappet brothers. The show was produced from 1977 to October 2012, when the Magliozzi brothers retired. Edited reruns continue to be available for airing on NPR affiliates. Premise, Car Talk was presented in the form of a call-in radio show. Listeners called in with questions related to motor vehicle maintenance and repair. Most of the advice sought was diagnostic, with callers describing symptoms and demonstrating sounds of an ailing vehicle while the Magliozis make an attempt at identifying the malfunction. While the hosts peppered their call and sessions with jokes directed at both the caller and at themselves, the Magliozis were usually able to arrive at a diagnosis and give helpful advice. However, when they were stumped, they attempted anyway with an answer they claimed was unencumbered by the thought process, the official motto of the show. Edited reruns are carried on XM satellite radio via both the public radio and NPR Now channels. The Car Talk theme music was DAWGGY Mountain Breakdown by bluegrass artist David Grisman. Equals call and procedure equals, throughout the program, listeners were encouraged to dial the toll-free telephone number, 1-888-CAR-TALK, which connected to a 24-hour answering service. Although the approximately 2,000 queries received each week were screened by the Car Talk staff, the questions were unknown to the Magliozis in advance as that would entail researching the right answer, which is what? Work. Producers selected and contacted the callers several days ahead of the show's Wednesday taping to arrange the segment. The caller spoke briefly to a producer before being connected live with the hosts, and was given little coaching other than being told to be prepared to talk, not to use any written preparation and to have fun. The show deliberately taped more callers than it has time to air each week in order to be able to choose the best ones for broadcast. Those segments that did make it to air were generally edited for time. For the last four years of the show, new shows included previously broadcast segments as much as 10 years old. The reused segments, including reused puzzlers, were not acknowledged as old material and sometimes new caller material was mixed in alongside the recycled calls. Equals features equals, the show originally consisted of two segments with a break in between. Then the show was changed to three segments. The hosts used to refer to content coming up in the second half of the program. Ever since the shift to the three-segment format, it became a running joke to refer to the last segment as the third half of the program. The show opened with a short comedy segment, typically jokes sent in by listeners, followed by eight call and sessions. The hosts ran a contest called The Puzzler, in which a riddle, sometimes car-related, was presented. The answer to the previous week's puzzler was given at the beginning of the second half of the show, and a new puzzler was given at the start of the third half. The hosts gave instructions to listeners to write answers addressed to puzzler tower on some non-existent or expensive object, such as a $26 bill, or an advanced digital SLR camera. This gag initially started as suggestions that the answers be written on the back of a $20 bill. A running gag concerned Tom's inability to remember the previous week's puzzler without heavy prompting from Ray. For each puzzler, one correct answer was chosen at random, with the winner receiving a $26 gift certificate to the car talk store, referred to as the Shameless Commerce Division. It was originally $25, but was increased for inflation after a few years. Originally, the winner received a specific item from the store, but it soon changed to a gift certificate to allow the winner to choose the item they wanted. A recurring feature was Stump the Chumps, in which the hosts revisited a caller from a previous show to determine the accuracy and the effect, if any, of their advice. A similar feature began in May 2001, Where Are They Now, Tommy? It began with a comical musical theme with a sputtering, backfiring car engine and a horn as a backdrop. Tom then announced who the previous caller was, followed by a short replay of the essence of the previous call, preceded and followed by harp music often used in other audiovisual media to indicate recalling and returning from a dream. The hosts then greeted the previous caller, 
confirming that they have not spoken since their previous appearance and asking them if there have been any influences on the answer they're about to relate, such as arcane bribes by the NPR staff. The repair story was then discussed, followed by a fanfare and applause if the Tappet brothers' diagnosis was correct, or a wah-wah-wah music piece mixed with a car starter operated by a weak battery if the diagnosis was wrong. The hosts then thanked the caller for their return appearance. The brothers also had an official animal vehicle biologist and wildlife guru named Karen Lindsay. She answered questions like how do I remove a snake from my car? and offered advice on how those living in cities and suburbs can reconnect with wildlife. Celebrities have been callers as well. Examples include Gaynor Davis, Morley Safer, Ashley Judd, Gordon Elliott, former Major League pitcher Bill Lee, and astronaut John M. Grunsfeld calling from the Space Shuttle. There were numerous appearances from NPR personalities, including Bob Edwards, Susan Stamberg, Scott Simon, Ray Suarez, Will Shaws, Sylvia Poggley, and commentator and author Daniel Pinkwater. On one occasion, the show featured Martha Stewart as an in-studio guest, whom the Magliozis twice during the segment referred to as Margaret. In addition to at least one on-orbit call, the brothers once received a call asking advice on winterizing an electric car. When they asked what kind of car, the caller stated it was a kit car, a $400 million kit car. It was a joke call from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory concerning the preparation of the Mars rover for the oncoming Martian winter. Click and Clack have also been featured in editorial cartoons, including one where a befuddled NASA engineer calls them to ask how to fix the space shuttle. Equals humor equals, humor and wise cracking pervaded the program. Tom and Ray are known for their self-deprecating humor often joking about the supposedly poor quality of their advice and the show in general. They also commented at the end of each show, well, it's happened to Ghana Euro you've wasted another perfectly good hour listening to car talk. At some point in almost every show, usually when giving the address for the puzzler answers, Ray mentioned Cambridge, Massachusetts, at which point Tom reverently interjected with a tone of civic pride, our fair city. Ray invariably mocked Cambridge, Massachusetts, the United States Postal Service's two-letter abbreviation for Massachusetts, by pronouncing it as a word. Preceding each break in the show, one of the hosts led up to the network identification with a humorous take on a disgusted reaction of some usually famous person to hearing that identification. The full line went along the pattern of, for example, and even though Roger Clemens stabs his radio with a syringe whenever he hears us say it, this is NPR, National Public Radio. At one point in the show, often after the break, Ray usually stated that, support for this show is provided by, followed by an absurd fundraiser. The ending credits of the show started with thanks to the colorfully nicknamed actual staffers, producer Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, Bongo Boy Frogman Berman. John Bugsy Lawler, just back from the Every week a different eating event with rhyming foodstuff names. David Carves of the Level Green. Catherine Fraubler one quarter chef and Oloza, whose name caused a horse to neigh and gallop. And Carly High Voltage Nix, among others. Following the real staff was a lengthy list of pun-filled fictional staffers and sponsors such as statistician Margin Overa, customer care representative Hayward Jabizoff, meteorologist Claudio Vernight, optometric firm CFI Care, Russian chauffeur pickup Andropov, Leo Tolstoy biographer Warren Peace, hygiene officer and chief of the Tokyo office Otaka Shawa, Swedish snowboard instructor Soren Dirk Easter, law firm Dewey, Cheatham and Howe, and many, many others, usually concluding with Erasmus B. Dragon, whose job title varied, but who was often said to be head of the show's working mother's support group. They sometimes advise that our chief counsel from the law firm of Dewey, Cheatham, and how is Hugh Louis Dewey, known to, group of people in Harvard Square as Huey Louis Dewey. Huey, Louis, and Dewey were the juvenile nephews being raised by Donald Duck in Walt Disney's comics and stories. Guest accommodations were provided by the Horseshoe Road Inn. At the end of the show, Ray warned the audience, don't drive like my brother, to which Tom replied, and don't drive like my brother. The original tagline was don't drive like a knucklehead. 
there have been variations such as, don't drive like my brother, and don't drive like his brother, and don't drive like my sister, and don't drive like my sister. The tagline was heard in a cameo for the Pixar film Cars, in which Tom and Ray voiced anthropomorphized vehicles with personalities similar to their own on-air Pisoni. Tom notoriously once owned a convertible, green with large areas of rust dodge dart, known jokingly on the program by the faux elegant named Artra. History, in 1977, radio station WBUR-FM in Boston was supposed to have mechanics talking about car repair on one of its programs, but only Tom was there. He did so well that both brothers were asked to host their own show, and they continued to do it every week. In 1986, the program was the third most popular on WBUR with 11,500 listeners, and NPR wanted to distribute it nationally. In 1992, Car Talk won a Peabody Award, saying each week, Master Mechanics Tom and Ray Magliosi provide useful information about preserving and protecting our cars. But the real core of this program is what it tells us about human mechanics. The insight and laughter provided by Messrs Magliosi, in conjunction with their producer Doug Berman, provide a weekly mental tune-up for a vast and ever-growing public radio audience. In May 2007, the program, which previously had been available digitally only as a paid subscription from Audible.com, became a free podcast distributed by NPR, after a two-month test period where only a call of the week was available via podcast. As of 2012, it had 3.3 million listeners each week, on about 660 stations. On June 8, 2012, the brothers announced that they would no longer broadcast new episodes as of October. Executive producer Doug Berman said the best material from 25 years of past shows would be used to put together rep opposed shows for NPR to broadcast. Berman estimated the archives contain enough for eight years' worth of material before anything would have to be repeated. The brothers will no longer write their syndicated newspaper column. Hosts the Magliosis are long-time auto mechanics. Ray Magliosi has a Bachelor of Science degree in Humanities and Science from MIT, while Tom had a Bachelor of Science degree in Economics from MIT and an MBA and EBA from the Boston University School of Management. The duo, usually led by Ray, were known for rants on the evils of the internal combustion engine, people who talk on mobile phones while driving, Peugeots, women named Donna who always seem to drive Chevrolet Camaros, lawyers, the clever use of the English language, people who choose to live in Alaska, and practically anything else, including themselves. They had a relaxed and humorous approach to cars, car repair, cup holders, pets, lawyers, car repair mechanics, SUVs, and almost everything else. They often cast a critical, jaundiced insider's eye toward the auto industry. Tom and Ray were committed to the values of defensive driving and environmentalism. The Magliosis operated a garage together. The show's offices were located nearby at the corner of JFK Street and Brattle Street in Harvard Square, marked as Dewey, Cheatham and Howe, the imaginary law firm to which they refer on air. DC and H doubled as the business name of Tappet Brothers Associates, the corporation established to manage the business end of car talk. Initially a joke, the company was incorporated after the show expanded from a single station to national syndication. The two were commencement speakers at MIT in 1999. Executive producer Doug Berman said in 2012, The guys are culturally right up there with Mark Twain and the Marx Brothers. They will stand the test of time. People will still be enjoying them years from now. They're that good. Tom Magliosi died on November 3, 2014, at age 77, due to complications from Alzheimer's disease. Adaptations The show was the inspiration for the short-lived The George Wen Show, which briefly aired on CBS in the 1994-1995 season as a mid-season replacement. In July 2007, PBS announced that it had greenlit an animated adaptation of Car Talk, to air on prime time in 2008. The show, titled Click and Clacks as the Wrench Turns is based on the adventures of the fictional Click and Clack Brothers Garage at Car Talk Plaza. The ten episodes aired in July and August 2008. Car Talk, the musical, 
was written and directed by Wesley Savick, and composed by Michael Wartofsky. The adaptation was presented by Suffolk University, and opened on March 31, 2011, at the Modern Theatre in Boston, Massachusetts. The play was not officially endorsed by the Magliosias, but they participated in the production, lending their voices to a central puppet character named the Wizard of Cars. References External links Official website, Click and Clacks as the Wrench Turns Official Site, Transcript of the Magliosis Commencement Address at MIT, 1999